zabývat malířstvím uh, socialistického realismu v rámci uh, armády. Uh, I will talk about uh, socialist realism in the military art studio. This is the most official part of uh, painting in the 1950s. The military art studio was established in 1952, but the possibilities of connecting art with uh, arm, the army uh, started to appear at the end of the 40s. Um, people considered uh, to involve art historians or um, or the artists uh, would come to uh, the barracks and they would educate uh, soldiers or perhaps soldiers would uh, go to studios and they would be educated this way. In the end, this resulted in establishment of the army studi art studio. Of course, the model was in Russia. In uh, mid-30s, uh, they ha already had uh, Grekov's studio and they only dealt, or they focused on military uh, topics. Uh, the design of uh, the army studio, the proposal is, uh, our, is in the archives uh, in Prague, in the Union of uh, Visual Artists. Uh, the concept uh, said that the group should have, or also have one leader one leading artist, older, or um, somebody who was uh, politically correct, uh, who had politically correct painting, and the, this leader should have work with two younger colleagues. So this proposal only has one artist, even though, uh, and the name, his name is Jan Čumpelík. At the beginning, I will explain uh, the way, uh, what, what preceded the army studio. And then I will come back to uh, the work by Jan Čumpelík. Jan Čumpelík, the, uh, the elder uh, the, or the leader of the group, uh, when he was a teenager, he already started to work in a workshop uh, creating um, theater um, equipment. Then he studied art uh, school in Prague and Academy of Fine Arts in Prague uh, under Bratislav Chleba. When he was 18, he had to uh, go into the army and he left for Italy. Uh, that's where, that's the photograph, the black and white photograph before leaving, just before leaving. His work in 1930s focused on portraits of um, important personalities of uh, the given region and also his relatives, friends or family. Painting is dark. Uh, it uses uh, fine or smooth brushwork. It uh, tries to be tries to uh, be similar with um, academic painting. Later, he changes completely his um, drawing expression and. Uh, he focuses on folk, folk uh, topics, and this is uh, what uh, he's interested in until the what he had been interested in until the rest of his life, and he created enormous amount of this picture. You don't see the colors. Uh, well, here this, this is a better example. Uh, he uses very uh, bright colors and more layers. People who uh, are models in the portraits, this was more most natural for him uh, to paint uh, people in his surroundings. Uh, they never, they have never expressions of um, happiness uh, 
or anything like that. He also depicts uh, work of children sometimes. Another example from this period. And now we go to the end of the 40s. Uh, in 1948, he paints an official portrait of Clement Gottwald. This was preceded by one uh, order. In 1946, he was allowed to, or he was commissioned to uh, decorate a dining room uh, in uh, the Tatra company in Česká Lípa. Uh, this room was later called uh, the Hall of the Workers, Hall of Workers. This is where he met his colleague, Jaromir Schoř. And um, the Tatra company in Česká Lípa was uh, visited by Clement Gottwald. Uh, the company was later called Tatra, the company of Clement Gottwald, or Clement Gottwald's company. And uh, it was, the room was later used for events uh, uh, where politicians were involved. And uh, Clement Gottwald later became a friend of uh, Jan Čumpelík and other members of uh, this army art studio. Another uh, picture where General Čepička visits the army art studio and uh, the group presents their works. These are other two colleagues, uh, Jan Čumpelík, Alena Čermáková a Karel Schoř. Alena Čermáková, when she started with the studio, she was 26 years old, and Jaromír Schoř was uh, 40 years old, and Čumpelík was 57. So compared to Alena Čermáková, he was really uh, much older. Alena Čermáková was very uh, enthusiastic uh, follower uh, or supporter of socialist realism. At the end of uh, her studies, she already made a lot of posters and she was very serious about uh, her work and she really wanted to fight for a better time. Uh, and this is caused by uh, the fact that her father was uh, imprisoned and um, later murdered uh, because uh, her his participation in uh, the fight against uh, the Nazi regime. In 1950, Jan Čumpelík uh, was commissioned to paint an official painting uh, to be presented in Moscow, and, uh, and this painting was supposed to represent Czech, Czechoslovakia. This is uh, a monumental painting, nine times eight meters, and it depicts uh, Czechoslovak people uh, and uh, Stalin, journalism Stalin. This painting was not finished in time. It was finished in 1952. It was exhibited in 1952 on an exhibition of Czechoslovak-Soviet uh, friendship. There are many photographs uh, from various stages of uh, completion of the work. Again, this is uh, the group of artists. Um, very good lighting. The painting went through different stages and it was changed many times. Uh, we can see uh, the most changes happened occurred in the figure of Stalin. I will show you details uh, which relate to uh, what I mentioned about Jan Čupalík before. Um, in between, among the people 
each figure represents a, a representative of a region or of um, trade. Um, all uh, figures in uh, folk costumes are in front of the fig of the painting, and they are very visible in the painting. Um, Chumpelik uh, was really interested in showing the folk costumes, and this was his intent. This is one detail uh, I would like to show you uh, of a lace maker. Uh, she presents her lace uh, cloth to Stalin, and again, this is a um, um, reflection of uh, traditional folk trade. Another. A man with the, uh, the vessel uh, represents uh, probably wine region and wine making trade. Um, and this uh, container, the vessel, uh, uh, again, is, uh, is has a lot of decoration, very detailed decoration. There is uh, also some. There are some words. Another. Nice detail are two men carrying a, a railway engine model. This might uh, feel strange, but it can re um, probably uh, report to or re reflect uh, industrial development of Czechoslovakia. What was important for Čumpelík was uh, or the um, the commission of uh, decoration of the dining hall in Tatra company was a very big order for Chumpali, very big commission. Uh, so this is um, probably his one of his resources, and because Tatra also made railway engines. Um, this is not a very um, visible very well, uh, but the group. Uh, of the artists is um, uh, also depicted in the picture. Uh, this is a preparatory painting. This is the mother of uh, Alena Čermákova. Very small detail. Uh, and also uh, proof that it was discussed a lot was that uh, for example, you can see that the, this lady, old lady, had different shoes. Uh, so it was really discussed into very much detail. To uh, recap uh, this painting, it belongs to iconic uh, works of socialist realism. Uh, which was controlled to the smallest detail, but I still see tendencies um, of Jan Čumpelík, uh, or tendencies made or in, inclu included by Čumpelík's upon his own will. In 1925, uh, he was member of uh, Union of Fine Artists, uh, which um, uh, followed uh, the idea of uh, traditional painting of the 19th century. And very carefully, we can call this picture, this painting, a uh, celebration of um, Czechoslovak people after the, after war, after the war. Uh, this, this is Preceded, this painting precedes uh, the establishment of the army studio. Actually, it was created already as part of the studio, even though the studio was officially established in 1952. These are works which are created directly for the army um, art studio. They were uh, the paintings were very uh, simplified and uh, artists visited uh, the training um, areas and they saw soldiers um, practicing uh, training 
momentum. And they depicted um, fights and uh, Im important moments from the training. Photographs show members uh, of the studio during the visit of uh, General, General Čepička. The larger photograph where they're sitting is supposed to be a meeting uh, where they discuss the Thanksgiving painting, the, the Stalin painting. Next, uh, this is this is what uh, the photograph is not uh, of very good quality, but it's uh, a painting called uh, "Back in the Homeland," and this uh, is a very uh, this is not typical. Uh, this is very untypical. Uh, for Alena Čermáková uh, because of the uh, bright colors and brushwork, but uh, because it's, this was intended for an exhibition or for some presentation. This was uh, supposed to go to Grekov studio uh, 1956. Another part uh, is uh, the caption of uh, uh, points where the fights uh, were uh, took place by the Czech army, and uh, this was based on the critic of uh, army studio that the artists, you know, deal with uh, specific great moments of uh, Czech army. And uh, artists had to uh, go on their way and uh, locate these uh, locations and paint them. Here you can see another picture of Alena Čermáková. This one was uh, used at the Fair Festival of uh, Youth and Students in 1965. Uh, was exhibited. This one is more uh, likely to be uh, one of the representative uh, artworks of Alena Čermáková. This is a photograph of uh, the exhibit. Another picture is uh, depicting one of uh, the persons that you can find on the Thanksgiving uh, picture. It's uh, a woman with small pig. Uh, this one was considered to be really bizarre because the woman is uh, holding the little pig uh, in the same way as she would hold a baby. So it's really uh, bizarre. The last uh, picture I want to show you, uh, behind the people you can see only a small part of a uh, picture of Clement Gottwald visiting our soldiers. It's a really big picture and it represented Czechoslovakia. Uh, to conclude, Army Studio was uh, not allowing the artists to uh, put their own ideas or uh, personal preferences into the artwork and uh, this was limiting for the artists and they had to paint what they were told to do to paint for example Alena Čermáková uh, leaves the studio in 1966 uh, saying that she wants to do something else Jan Čumpelík stays there uh, until uh, he died in 1965. Uh, Jans Huchor uh, also stayed there, uh, but he died in 1975. Uh, uh, he, he, um, he still dedicated his uh, pictures to the army, the topic of army, but uh, his uh, paintings changed a bit. I wanted also. I also wanted to show you that uh, the artworks that we uh, consider to be the iconic artwork of social realism 
that uh, you can still find some tendencies that uh, artists put in their work because they want it and that was not uh, possible later uh, when working for the art studio. Okay, thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions.